captured those. Who is it? What do you see? As it twists its eyes beneath our feet. Hey everyone, happy Festival of the Lost, it's Reaper from British Fin Games, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the second weapon review on a weapon that can be sold by the Vanguard vendor known as the Angel's Advocate. Now this weapon has been claimed to be the new Amida multi-tool, but I'm going to let you guys decide that for yourselves, and again, while watching this video, know that this is only the vendor role that you can purchase from the vendor. You can probably get better roles that suit more your, to your playstyle from Vanguard packages, but before we get into that weapon review, we gotta talk about Festival of the Lost. It's by far my favorite event of the year. I wasn't able to play last year during Festival of the Lost, and logging in for the first time and seeing all this this year has blown away all my expectations. I am more than impressed with what Bungie's done. I'm usually the person that craps on Bungie a lot just because of all the disconnects and the connection errors and being lagged out and all that, but for this one time, I'll give you props, Bungie. You did good. You did good. I'm very impressed with the shaders, the sparrows, all the emotes, the music, the decorations, and especially getting the candy. The candy is a really cool concept, and the fact that you had to go between each character, and like there was little sayings here and there, and cool dialogue and trading, just to get the super black shader, which I really wanted since year one when there was rumors about it. It, it was worth it. It was definitely a really cool event that I'm glad Bungie's put on. And from what I've been told by Corporal Jet, this is actually bigger than last year, and I believe him. Because apparently last year there wasn't as much, but there was cool little things here and there. But I'm glad Bungie puts this event on. But you guys aren't here to talk about Festival of the Lost. You're here to talk about the Angel's Advocate. So let's talk about the Angel's Advocate right now. So for the Angel's Advocate, the sights that it comes with are Red Dot ORA2, Range Lens RLRS, and OEG Rifle Scope. And after using all three, I found that OEG was probably the best to use in my own opinion because it didn't compromise any of the other base stats, but improved the range. Next we have Outlaw, Take a Knee, Small Bore, Explosive Rounds, and Reactive Reload. And the thing I love most about this weapon is how well Outlaw and Reactive Reload work together. Since it's common to get headshot kills with a scout rifle, this perk is going to proc pretty often, and along with this, the magazine size causes most players to reload after a kill, and this is a common habit I've had since playing my first FPS, and I'm sure a lot of people do, and I always want to have a full magazine when I engage another target. So that constant reloading causes Reactive Reload to proc often, giving you extra damage, and your reload is actually a lot faster since you have Outlaw in your perk tree and giving you more damage and being able to reload faster is a big help and I think it works really well together and I wish more perks like this would work as well together on other weapons. You just got to be lucky though when you get it on the perk tree. Now looking at the two uh, weapons together, the Mita Multi-Tool and the Angel's Advocate, it's the same archetype and it has the same rate of fire. I really like this since the slower rate of fires don't seem to be getting a buff anytime soon. And I think this archetype will be the most effective and dominant among scout rifles for a long time until the slower rate of fire gets an, a buff. So I think the Angel's Advocate and the Mighty Multi-Tool archetype are going to be around for a long time. And the Angel's Advocate has a slightly higher per damage per shot. I mean, it's hard to tell, but it's definitely there. You can see it in the numbers during the gameplay. And without reactive reload, it has a slower base reload, but... I don't think that's a much of a problem when Outlaw is procced because, if anything, I think it reloads faster than the Mighty Multi-Tool when Outlaw is procced because, I don't know, you can just definitely tell that you're reloading a lot faster. You can see for yourself during the gameplay. Now the recoil on this weapon is going to cause the weapon to rise up and to the left, but when I was aiming down sights and engaging targets at long range, it was definitely controllable. It wasn't overbearing, but it's definitely going to raise up and to the left. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to engage a target in either PvE or PvP at long ranges. I think this weapon is really good for PvE. The perks put down enemies quick due to the high rate of the fire, and since you're constantly reloading due to the small magazine size, the main perk, Reactive Reload, procs often, and since you're getting headshots with this weapon, Outlaw is just going to perk as much and the two together will make you reload faster and give you extra damage which makes you put down enemies even quicker. Since scouts are the dominant 
weapon to use in PvE, and this archetype is probably one of my favorites. I think I'm going to use it more often than not in most PvE engagements. And the other thing I love most about this weapon is that the, it has explosive rounds, which I found out recently count as solar damage, so any burn with solar damage increase is really helpful when using this weapon. And just the mix between Outlaw and Reactive Reload are a deadly combination, and I think it's going to work really well in any PvE engagement you have. So for a rating on this weapon in PvE, I'm going to probably give it a 9 out of 10. So the main focus of this video is going to be how well this weapon does in Crucible. You're probably wondering, is this weapon as effective as the modern multi-tool? Is it not as effective? Is it somewhere in between? And I'm going to try to answer that with breaking down the weapon into pros and breaking down into cons. The first couple pros of this weapon is going to be that it works really well with all the perks. The perks work together and I think that many other weapons have perks that do their own individual things but having reactive reload and outlaw work so well together most weapons aren't going to be able to do this and i think it's a genuine gem that most people aren't going to have when they're just getting a regular vendor weapon the good rate of fire and being part of the more dominant archetype of weapons certainly helps it and if you don't have a mono multi-tool, you can just buy this weapon since it's available to anyone at 150 Vanguard marks, excuse me, legendary marks, Vanguard marks for in year one. Let's not talk about that. Um, but the other thing I love most is you can get this weapon and it's not the only role you can get. You can get better roles from Vanguard packages. With the Mita multi-tool, that's not possible. It's an exotic where you're stuck with the perks you're stuck with. Yeah, you have an exotic, but you can't really choose any other perks than what you have because that's just standard with the exotics. Yeah, you have one part of the perk tree where you can choose between three different perks, but with this weapon, you can get all sorts of assortments of different roles if you don't like the vendor role. So it's definitely possible to get anything that fits your playstyle better if you don't think that the vendor role works best for you. Now the other thing I love about this weapon is that it can really hold its own in close quarters. Most people aren't going to expect you to do well in close quarters because you have a scout rifle, but as long as you aim down sight, don't panic and hit your shots, you're going to be able to deter a lot of people at close quarters. Along with this, it's actually a really good sniper deterrent. I was using this in a couple Crucible matches where I had people aim down sight and were using a sniper, and I was actually able to either make them hit my body instead of my head, or they would actually just altogether back off, which was really nice, and sometimes I would even get the kill. So, even though people don't know whether or not flinch is really that big of a deal, depending on if the sniper has unflinching, or if flinch really is that big of a deal, but you're going to be able to hold your own at long ranges, which is something that's really helpful in any sort of crucible match. When you're using this weapon, you're going to be able to find yourself holding your own against any sniper, but sometimes you're going to run into people that are just really good at sniping, and you might get killed, but more often than not, I feel like this is a good sniper deterrent. Now the other thing about this weapon is that it has a small magazine, which is considered a good thing and a bad thing. It can be a bad thing because in sixes, you're going to have a lot of people coming at you at some times, and only having 12 rounds in the magazine, that means you might not have enough to deal with everyone. But at the same time, the small magazine size means you're going to be reloading often, which means A, reactive reload is going to proc as long as you're getting kill. And if it's a headshot kill, that means Outlaw and Reactive Reload are going to proc, which means extra damage at a faster reload, which means more we more rounds downrange, and that's a good thing. But again, the constant reloading, if you're in sixes, that can be a problem sometimes because you have a lot of people to deal with. But with Reactive Reload proc, it's a three tap to the head, which is really nice, and 51 damage to the body. Without it proc, though, it's only 38 to the body and 57 to the head. With a fast rate of fire, that's a good amount of damage downrange, but again, it's a good thing and a bad thing. So, even though it's a slightly bad thing, I'm going to still count it as a pro. Now for the cons of this weapon, I'm going to tell you straight out of the gate that its aim assist is nowhere near as high as the Midas. The Mita Multi-Tools has a low 90s aim assist, whereas the Angel's Advocate, I think the aim assist is the low 70s, I'm not 100% sure. That's... I'm pretty sure that's what it is last time I checked, but if you've never used the Mita Multi-Tool, then you don't know what you're missing out on, and that's not really an issue for you, but if you use the Mita Multi-Tool a lot in year two and year one like I did, then you definitely notice there's a difference, but that can also be a good thing because using this weapon, that means you can get used to the lower aim assist and improve your shots on your targets, and then when you go to something with a higher aim assist, you'll find you're hitting targets a lot easier 
so you can use it as a way to practice but after using it for a while the angels advocates aim assist wasn't really that much of an issue it just took some time getting used to but scouts right now are not the top tier when it comes to crucible that may change with the new updates but right now hand cannons and pulse rifles that are a faster fire seem to be the more dominant unless the slower rate of fire comes with god roll perks so don't get discouraged right now because uh, the Mita multi-tool seems to be the really only scout rifle that's constantly dominant that may change in the future with the new updates that are coming but again remember that there are guns that are more dominant in crucible than scout rifles but if you know how to use this weapon effectively and use it to a play style that really benefits the weapons perks and yourself I don't think it's much of an issue along with this the weapon seemed to be better in threes than it did sixes due to the magazine size and the constant reloading. I just had more fun with it in threes than I did sixes. But again, if you like doing sixes more than you like doing threes and that's just who you are and you can find a way to use the weapon's perks and its small magazine size to your benefit, by all means, go for it. I just had more fun with it in threes than I did sixes because I found that I could reload and still have enough time to get shots on target, get the next kill, and get the perk to proc again without having more people rush me. Along with the last two things I'm going to talk about, the fact that it doesn't come with a radar and you may need an exotic or an artifact that enhances your radar to allow it to be used during all primaries. Uh, that's something the Mita Multi-Tool will always have against this weapon unless you get a Vanguard roll where it comes with Third Eye. That's not a huge issue because some people don't like it in having enhanced radar. Some people don't use your radar as much as other artifacts that may benefit you more because it helps your build. But for me, I like having an enhanced radar where I can aim down sight and have it right there. So that's something the Mita Multi-Tool will always have that this weapon won't have as a vendor roll. But... Again, if the radar isn't a huge issue for you, then that's something that's not going to be a big deal, and that's not as big of a con. And the last two things um, that kind of go hand in hand are, this weapon does not come with a hair trigger like the Mita Multi-Tool does. And the hair trigger makes it slightly faster on the rate of fire, even though it doesn't show it on the base perks, but you can definitely see it in gameplay. Now, the agility boost on it is another big thing everyone likes about the Mita, but again, you can get that in a Vanguard package, and that can be something that is with this weapon that can make it more like the Mita, and if you have it with Third Eye, it's even more like the Mita, but getting an agility boost is not what's going to be on the vendor roll, which is what I'm showing to you, but again, if the agility boost isn't a huge issue for you, then that's fine, then it's not a big con for you. So overall, I'm going to give this weapon a 7 out of 10 in Crucible. It's not the most dominant, but I think if you know how to use this weapon effectively and you enjoy using it and it fits your playstyle, then it's something that I think everyone that knows how to use it effectively can use and will have a lot of fun with. And if you're not trying to be super competitive, I think this weapon is for you. Alright guys, that's going to do it for me on this weapons review. If you like what you saw, please let us know down in the comments section below. We're actually thinking about either doing the Palindrome or the Clever Dragon for our next weapon review. I know it's a little late, but let us know down in the comments section below and we'll be sure to provide you guys with a video within the next week or two. We're not sure. Our schedules vary and some days it's harder to make videos, but we're going to try our best to put down another weapons review for you guys. And if you like what you saw and you're new to our videos, go hit that subscribe button. Don't be afraid to like, don't be afraid to comment, we definitely review your comments, and we will respond to any comments you have in any of our videos. That's a guarantee, I promise that. So, until the next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.